Finance 3. Finance 3 running on PlayStation 3. In the first scene, we have a little scene where we show the color grading of artistic control. So you have black and white, sepia tone, very some extreme color palettes, just to show that the artist could actually go really uh, crazy about it. We just go through a, a three or four different color uh, themes. Now we're going to go down into um, sort of uh, Blade Runner, Gears of War-ish kind of scenario. And during this demo, we will go through quite a few different asset uh, sets that will allow us to show that content variety and expression from designers can be actually uh, allowed in the engine. So it's not, it doesn't cater to one type of, uh, type of uh, set of uh, game only. So we have the usual suspects of decals, uh, send some new stuff is a, f a procedural breakage. We wanted to make the demo, unlike the GDC demo, a bit more interactive. So we actually, this is how a game could feel and play like. So showing some physics and um, stuff. So some AI here. Carl is very bad at shooting games, people. Let's <laughs> yeah. Again, some rectal physics set up. Decals, particle explosions. You also see on the screen, actually, a little bit of noise that is going on, uh, like filmic noise, um, that is giving the color and the, and the dark colors a little bit more green. Everything that you see from all lights and shadows are real time, so there's nothing pre computed whatsoever. This is literally the only engine that does everything in real time. I mean, there's no one other engine that performs every step in real time. So every frame loop, it goes through all the things that you see on the screen. All the shading, all the lights, the F shadows. The wind, and the, the cloth. Yeah, again, just won't show how close range details could look like on a console. I mean, again, the, the idea was a PS3, 360 and PC look the same, identical. So for us to achieve that, is this kind of crisp detail was a major challenge. I mean, you will see also the amount of data we are going through in this uh, demo as we play through. There's a lot of data we crammed in in the, three, in the PS3 in, in a very short amount of time. So there's a streaming system running in the back end and adding more and more content to the, to the world. All the lighting technique is uh, based on uh, the best of world or best of breed of forward and deferred rendering. So through deferred uh, lighting techniques, we can allow the users to pretty much put in a scene hundreds of lights without uh, performance issues. Now the next scene uh, you will be more familiar with, which is sort of the crisis <laughs> thing. So squeezing that one in into the uh, PS3 was an extremely big challenge. And maintaining the physics kind of interactivity we have seen before, like and the famous breaking the tree thing. <laughs> All the, all the techniques and all the shaders that we have seen on, on the Crysis before are all present in, uh, in the CryEngine. So specular uh, vegetation, you have, uh, sorry, I'm getting into the camera picture, uh, specular shading, uh, water reflections, soft shadows, some of the interaction of huts as we have seen before. I mean, everything just works like in, uh, pretty much like on the PC. The thing is, we have improved and optimized the engine so much that actually the PC version, through the research team that worked on the console, they optimized so much the work that we could roll it back to PC engine. And so uh, we had two research teams actually working in parallel. At one point, we said, hey, you, you guys should merge. And, uh, and CryEngine 3 was actually out of these two branches coming together, where we had the PC engine moving forward and they had the console version catching, catching up. And once we mix this team together, CryEngine 3 was pretty much the engine that runs on consoles and actually pushes, pushes PC gaming forward. This is going to launch in a month from now. Is it a month? Sorry. When is launching? In a month? When? Yeah, in about a month. September. End of September is the plan. I mean, we revealed it in GDC in, uh, in San Francisco. We are showing it off here, and in a month we want to bring it to the public and to the developers. So the SDKs will roll out probably mid of September, end of September, the first ones. 
at GDC we had more interest than we could handle actually at this stage because we were not ready to give our SDK, so we gave in some selected developers. We got a lot of good feedback, like small things like what to improve here and there. It was very helpful for us. And with that feedback now we're going to roll out uh, much bigger. This is an interesting challenge because we said we could do jungles and uh, other out outdoors, but how about European forests? And technically, in RG6 spoken, it sounds like not a big deal, but actually, technically, it was a big issue because so every palm tree or every element in a natural environment, like a jungle, the LOD systems are different. So with large trees that are very long, long, the LOD system has to work differently. Now, this, this is from a game that is not in production anymore at Crytek. So we have done this for optimize, uh, optimizing the assets for the console from the beginning. So if you optimize the assets, unlike the ones that were done from Crisis, you get even more out of the screens. Yeah? So if you start from scratch towards console title, you can really get uh, so much more data out of it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> It's, it's cancelled. <laughs> it was actually a quite cool game. It was very close to my heart. But uh, the quality bar, we couldn't, uh, actually gameplay-wise, we just couldn't get the quality bar we wanted for. And, uh, but we said we can use it for technology demos because it was just beautiful. So next instance, so notice that we haven't loaded yet, right? It's everything is streaming in the back, in, back end. And we wanted to show different type of art sets and styles. So next in sense is a very interesting theme, a more fantasy uh, kind of uh, castle fantasy theme, yeah, how we want to call it. Um, the idea of this, if you just stop for a second, the idea is that we want to push the pixel at to maximum on console, see how far we can take a shader and really maximize it, the interactive dynamic shader. Yeah? If you look down just one second, you see that everything actually here is dynamic. Yeah, every surface has a wet shade. If you look here, the water is dripping down here. Yeah. I mean, every pixel is moving specularly correct. And we want to see how we can add rain, reflections, fire, all kind of dramatic lighting into one box and see the shading p computation power to a maximum. And um, so that was another scene which we just did for this tech demo, just to show how far we can push the boundaries of the visuals. I don't know. I don't think we have so many cancelled projects. <laughs> Time will tell. Sooner or later, we will all know. Yeah. But uh, this piece actually was literally done for this tech demo. So we wanted to, as I said, I mean, if you look at the water as well, Carl, just one second here. I mean, I just love the ripples on the water. It's being everywhere all the procedural small details you see here it's just it shows just so vast and not just also the texture detail the, the, the detail level of uh, per pixel that you have on a console on PlayStation 3 now there is a lot of engines that run or two major engines that run beside us on consoles PS3 360 but i would argue nobody's running on PS3 as good as we do i can put my hand on fire on this nobody I mean, nobody. I have seen what people are running on PS3. And we can run on PS3 and 360 MPC, this quality bar. And I mean, PS3 would be the lowest nominator for a lot of people. But in our case, actually, PS3 is running like at the top level. Why is PS3 a No, it's very difficult. I mean, uh, the PS3 as an engine, is very, uh, as a technology platform, is extremely challenging. But all the SPUs, the cell architecture itself, the, the, the low end GPU compared to the rest of the family, the 360 MPC, it adds a uh, complexity to it, but we have managed to abstract this complexity from a developer and write intelligent compute systems that actually take, t take care of the, the, the problems. Um, and that's it. <laughs>